The scientific revolution was a time of great change. It marked the moment in history when scholars began to question the authority of their rulers and the Roman Catholic Church. The seeds of the scientific revolution began in the mid-1400s around the time of the Renaissance, where brilliant and curious minds like Leonardo da Vinci developed new inventions and culture, political thought, and the arts flourished. Prior to this moment, people determined what was true and what was false by blindly following the ideas of the ancient Greeks and Romans, like Aristotle, or the teachings of the Bible. The majority of people in Europe believed in what was called the geocentric theory, or the idea that the Earth was the center of the universe. If we break that down, we have the prefix geo, meaning Earth, like geography or geology, coming from Gaia, the goddess of Earth in Greek mythology. Centric refers to the idea that Earth was believed to be an unmoving object at the center of the universe that everything else revolved around. There were many causes of the scientific revolution. First, European thinkers discovered and translated the ancient writings and scientific knowledge of Muslim scholars, which enabled them to begin teaching courses in math and science. Think about the Arabic numerals you have learned in math class over the years. Second, remember how in 1492 Columbus sailed the ocean blue? The age of discovery led to scientists being introduced to new species of plants and animals and new peoples they had no idea even existed. Third, do you remember the name of the famous German inventor of the printing press? I'll give you a clue. Johann... Johann... Gutenberg. Johann Gutenberg was the inventor of the printing press, which allowed for the rapid spread of information and the circulation of new ideas. Because more literature was readily available, and people no longer had to wait years for monks to handwrite documents, the population of Europe gradually became more literate and educated. The Age of Discovery also motivated and inspired the development of new scientific inventions and instruments. Think about all of the devices the explorers needed to be able to navigate the high seas. There were many important scientific minds that greatly influenced the scientific revolution. One such scientist was Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish cleric who observed the night sky for over 25 years. Copernicus was the first scientist to challenge the geocentric theory, and instead hint at the idea that the Earth and other planets revolved around the Sun. This idea became known as the heliocentric theory. Helio coming from the name of the Greek god Helios, who would pull the Sun up in his chariot in the morning and cause the Sun to set in the evening. The heliocentric theory was extremely controversial because it directly contradicted the teachings of the Catholic Church. In an effort to avoid possibly being hunted down and tortured, Copernicus waited to publish his findings on the revolution of the heavenly bodies until he was on his deathbed. The Catholic Church quickly banned his works. His body was discovered in 2005 and relocated to a place of prominence, where today he is revered as one of the great heroes of Poland. Another revolutionary scientist in the realm of astronomy was Johann Kepler, who reinforced Copernicus's heliocentric theory and took it a step further when he introduced the idea of elliptical orbits of the planets around the Sun. Instead of following a perfectly circular orbit around the Sun, Kepler discovered that certain planets take a little more time than others to make a full revolution around the Sun, so while it takes Earth an average of 365 days to rotate around the Sun, most other planets take much longer. Kepler was fortunate to piggyback many of his ideas, or steal them, uh, from the research of a wealthy Danish astronomer named Tycho Brahe. As a wealthy aristocrat, Bra had the most advanced laboratory in all of Denmark. He also lost his nose in a sword fight and wore a replacement copper, brass, silver, and gold prosthetic one. There are some interesting speculations about his cause of death. Word on the street is he died as a result of an exploded bladder after he refused to be rude and excuse himself to use the restroom, instead holding it. Others made claims that he may have been murdered 
or poisoned by his protege, Kepler, who was jealous of him. We may never know exactly what truly happened. The third important astronomer to make a significant impact on the scientific revolution was an Italian named Galileo Galilei. Galileo was from the Italian town of Pisa in Italy. He used to throw stones off the Leaning Tower of Pisa to test their weights. He also invented the modern telescope that enabled him to better observe the night sky. Galileo also reinforced Copernicus's idea of the heliocentric theory. This discovery became problematic because it challenged the authority of the Catholic Church. Galileo was interrogated in front of the Roman Inquisition. He was threatened with torture if he continued to spread his ideas. The church feared that if the people learned that one of their ideas was incorrect, they would start to challenge other ones as well. Ultimately, Galileo signed a statement proclaiming that his ideas were false. With sincere heart and unpretended faith, I abjure, curse, and detest the aforesaid errors and heresies of Copernicus, and also every other error, contrary to the Holy Church. And I swear that in the future I will never again say or assert anything that might cause a similar suspicion toward me. Galileo lived under house arrest for the remainder of his life until his death in 1642. It wasn't until 1992 when the Catholic Church acknowledged that Galileo was in fact correct. Another major development of the scientific revolution was the implementation of the scientific method, the logical procedure for gathering and testing ideas. I'm sure you have all used this for a while in your science classes. With the scientific method, you begin with a question from an observation. You develop a hypothesis, and you follow a set of procedures to come up with a conclusion. The scientists most notable for their contributions to the scientific method were Sir Francis Bacon and René Descartes. Francis Bacon was a scientist, writer, and English statesman in the court of Queen Elizabeth I of England. He encouraged scientists to experiment and observe using the five senses, urging them to record what they see, smell, taste, hear, and feel while conducting an experiment. He is often credited with the idea known as empiricism. René Descartes was a French philosopher, mathematician, and founder of analytical geometry. He encouraged the use of skepticism or the idea to doubt everything until it was proven by reason. He is famous for his words, cogitu ergo sum, or I think therefore I am, where he was able to deduce that he existed because he was aware of his ability to think. He is often associated with deductive reasoning, or the use of logic and reason to arrive at basic truths. Descartes' brilliance was highly sought after by the European elites. Descartes died as a result of tutoring Queen Christina of Sweden after catching a chill that led to pneumonia during the frigid Scandinavian winter. Perhaps the most important thinker of the scientific revolution was the English scientist Sir Isaac Newton. Newton is credited as the author of calculus and is known for his laws of motion. Do you remember some of the Newton's laws of motion? An object in motion stays in motion unless an outside force acts upon it, and an object at rest stays at rest until an outside force acts upon it. Or, every action has an equal opposite reaction. Legend has it that Newton was inspired to study gravity after an apple fell from a tree and hit him on the head. In the realm of the biological sciences, Andreas Vesalius, a Flemish physician, became the father of human anatomy. Vesalius dissected human corpses to study and better understand its composition and function. His practice of breaking into cemeteries and stealing bodies was highly controversial and frowned upon, but it allowed for him to publish his detailed book of sketches on the fabric of the human body in 1543. If any of you ever plan on going to medical school in the not-so-distant future, be prepared to complete a comprehensive dissection of the human body. 
By the late 1700s, English physician Edward Jenner developed the first vaccine to prevent smallpox, a deadly virus that had claimed the lives of millions around the world over the centuries. Smallpox was similar to chickenpox in the regard that it would cover the body of its victims with scores of painful pustules that would often lead to permanent scarring. The term cracking a smile comes from the times when people would melt wax to fill in and cover up the pockmarked scars left uh, on the people who suffered from smallpox. The wax would be molded into the crevices and smoothed out. When the person would go to smile, it would often break the wax, which would then fall to the ground. Queen Elizabeth I of England, who I mentioned briefly before, would often use similar tactics to cover up her scarred visage. The practice of inoculation was often widely used in parts of Asia and the Middle East. Inoculation was when scientists would take tiny samples of tissue or pus from an infected person and intentionally infect another person, hopefully with a small and weakened dose. This dangerous practice often had deadly results. Edward Jenner opted to use inoculation from the cowpox virus, which had many similarities to smallpox. After noticing that several of the milkmaids who labored by milking cows all day were less vulnerable to catching smallpox, he used cowpox to create the world's first vaccine. The final scientist that we are going to take a look at is Robert Boyle, who we know today as the father of modern chemistry. Prior to Boyle's discoveries, people believed in Aristotle's ideas that the physical world consisted of the elements of earth, water, fire, and air. Robert Boyle hinted that matter was comprised of smaller particles. He didn't officially discover the atom, instead he provided later scientists with the groundwork needed for that discovery. Boyle today is perhaps best known for his contribution to chemistry students of the world with his idea of Boyle's Law, which explains how the volume, temperature, and pressure of gas affect each other. The scientific revolution had numerous impacts on European thought and culture. These new scientific discoveries challenged the preconceived beliefs that the monarchs and Catholic Church preached the people for centuries as a means of social control. Now that these authorities were wrong about some of their teachings, the floodgates were opened and people began to use logic and reason to challenge other beliefs. People began to think for themselves instead of blindly believing what they were told. The ideas of the scientific revolution spilled over into the realm of politics, challenging how society functioned, beginning the time known as the Enlightenment or Age of Reason.